this is the new Vanitu T0 Plus. It's a brand new, tiny, little powered speaker. Can you get big music out of such a small package? Well, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's find out. Let's talk about the Vanitu T0 Plus. Vanitu is a U.S.-based company out of the Pacific Northwest, I believe. The first time I met them was at a Axpona show. Not this last year, but I think the previous year. And I was really impressed. They had their little tiny powered speakers in a room with a subwoofer. It was almost comical how small these looked in the room on a pair of stands. They also have another model, the Transparent One Encores bigger. That one has an aluminum dome tweeter. This one has a soft dome tweeter and the previous generation, the previous T0 had a soft dome tweeter as well. I personally like the tonality a little bit more of a soft dome tweeter. That's just my preference though. I feel like sometimes aluminum dome tweeters can be a little bit harsh with percussion. That's better. I think soft domes can be a little bit more organic and realistic. However, there is some sparkle that is sometimes missing on a soft dome versus an aluminum or a titanium or an AMT or maybe a beryllium. I don't know. Maybe there's cool new materials I don't even know about. This also comes with a four inch aluminum woofer that's been redesigned and a four inch high excursion passive radiator right there on either the top or the bottom. Depends on how you have these oriented because it comes with this cool, it's not a handle, it's a stand. I had them running like this in my living room, which keep in mind, my living room is huge. And then on my desk, I had them running like this. It also comes, these are a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. These also come with some foam pads that you can put on there. I had these on a pair of ISO acoustic stands in my living room. They barely fit on there, but they did. What's on the back? On the back of this one, you just have like a, I don't know what you call that, Ethernet, Cat5, whatever port. All the IT people's minds are exploding right now. It looks like an Ethernet connection, but it runs power from the main speaker and signal over to this speaker with a little one of those. This one is the brains of the operation. You have power right there. 24 volt, two and a half amp power supply that comes with it. So not a ton of juice, which is surprising. We'll get into that a little bit later though. Right here, you have the connection to the other speaker right here. Subwoofer port. It's gonna be very important. Optical connection, analog input, full size USB connection, little switchy switchy right here. And then a pairing button right here for your Bluetooth. Let's talk about how they work. These are surprisingly versatile and complicated little pieces of hi-fi equipment. They actually have two amplifiers inside. The woofer power is 48 watts. Tweeter power, two amplifiers at 12 watts. These are a class D Class D amplifiers inside. It would be difficult to squeeze some class AB amplification inside these things. They have a lot of DSP going on though. For the USB input, it's a max of 96 kilohertz, 24 bits, 96 kilohertz, which means you are not going to get bit perfect playback if you're listening to high res music. I would argue that that doesn't really matter. They come in at about four pounds a piece. The active one's four and a half pounds. On the back, you have a little three position switch. You got a V, a T, or a B. V stands for volume, T stands for treble, B stands for bass. So you're assigning what this potentiometer on top does. Either turn up the treble, turn up the bass, or turn up the volume. I just left it V for volume. Also comes with a remote control. It's kind of a rough, rubbery remote control. Does not feel cheap. However, it uses the much maligned flat batteries. I get it. Some remotes use flat batteries. I don't mind it as long as it works. As soon as it doesn't work though, I'm pulling through the drawers and I always have 2032 and I need 2024s or whatever it is. I wish it was just AAA or AA. 
but that's okay. This does work. Kind of interesting though is you have to hit this enable button before you can start messing around with tone controls or things like that. This again is highly versatile, but you're gonna have to do a little homework and you're gonna have to get used to the menu systems to be able to unlock all the functionality. You can actually control the output of the subwoofer on the remote control, but you gotta know which combination of keystrokes to put in. It's not that difficult, but you're probably gonna have to go through the manual because it's not super intuitive right out of the box. You can also switch what position this is. This is the powered speaker. I put it on the left part of my console and then I put the passive one on the right side and sure enough, I had them switched, which means when somebody walked off the left part of the screen, they actually sounded like they're walking to the right of the screen. What I had to do was I had to turn it off. I had to put this volume potentiometer in a certain position, press pair and then turn the speaker back on. And then sure enough, now, the left speaker is where the left speaker was supposed to be. You'll have to go through the manual to figure out all the different configurations and I am not tech support. So I'm just doing kind of an overview of this speaker. If you are new here, please consider donating your subscription, which is free to you, to help out the channel. We have over 750 videos, amp stacks, speakers, powered speakers, turntables, just about anything you can imagine when it comes to hi-fi home theater or headphones. It would really mean the world and help out the channel if you subscribe. Thank you for watching. So I'm just gonna get this out of the way. You need a subwoofer. Even for desktop applications, you may be able to get away with not having subwoofer. If you put it right against the wall, you're gonna get a little bit of room gain, a little bit of boundary reinforcement. But for me, the Vanity Transparent Zero Plus needed a subwoofer. When I added a subwoofer, I was amazed at what these little things could do, even in my big living room. It was almost comical how small these were on my console. What wasn't funny is just how good they sounded. For me, this is two thirds of a speaker. You're gonna have to budget for a subwoofer. You don't have to put really expensive subwoofer on there. I had the RSL 12 inch, which is an expensive subwoofer at $800. But I thought it would be super interesting to put such a tiny little speaker with such a giant sub and see if I could blend it together and make it sound like one cohesive system and I was able to make it sound like one cohesive system. The soundstage and imaging is remarkable. I had just gone from a five speaker setup with a Schitt Sin, two Q Acoustics 5020s, which come in around $800, a RSL speaker for the center, and then two Yamos for the surrounds. I wasn't getting sound coming from behind me, but the imaging was spot on for a center imaging. Vocals were coming right in the middle. And since these are so small, even though they're the same distance from the wall as my other speakers, they're not as deep. So the soundstage and imaging and some of the reflections and all the bad things that impact your enjoyment of the music were kind of mitigated because of how small these are. Editing Randy here. The other thing that was really interesting about the soundstage is I went and I hooked them back up after this video because well, the kids wanted to watch more TV. And when I stood up, I was significantly higher than the tweeter. And the vertical off-axis performance of these speakers is really spectacular. I was hardly missing anything when I was two feet, three feet even, above the tweeter level. So the off-axis performance of these speakers is really incredible. So the rest of this video, when I discuss the sound, Keep in mind that I'm not really talking about the bass from these. I did run these without a subwoofer. I adjusted the bass up, tried to get them to sound good, but they're not gonna compete with a bigger speaker. Where they do compete with a bigger speaker though is through mid-range clarity and top-end natural sound. The tonality of these is really spectacular. And I think they've DSP'd this thing to be very flat. So there wasn't any part of the upper mid-range that was coming forward too much. Everything seemed to be in line. Vocals actually seemed to be a little bit stepped back and I'd rather have vocals step back a touch than forward a touch. Tone controls was not heavy handed. I still wouldn't suggest going more than plus three or minus three, but there was a gradual increase in tone controls. What I ended up with at louder volumes and loud for me is anything above 85 dB 
and these will play at 85 dB even in a big room. I backed off treble minus one and then everything else I left flat and then I kind of adjusted things with the subwoofer. I listened to the Smiths, How Soon Is Now. I listened to the Redemption song, Bob Marley. Very, very articulate acoustic guitars. Very articulate vocals. Harvester of Sorrow by Metallica. The top end cymbals did not seem too sizzly. They didn't bite too much. They seemed and sounded like a cymbal. I was running my Apple TV into my TV and then optical out of the TV. So I was using Tidal and Amazon Music through my Apple TV into these. Really shocked at just how good these things sound. So what are my final thoughts? $450, I think these things are absolutely incredible, but they're not really $450 because you're gonna have to budget for a subwoofer. If you really are gonna get what I would consider to be a cohesive, full sound. Now you don't need to go crazy with the subwoofer. Actually, Emotiva has some awesome deals going on. And when you connect a subwoofer to this, you're actually supposed to turn the low pass filter in your sub all the way up and run it similar to an LFE input off of a home theater receiver. These are handling all the crossover duties, not only a high pass on itself, but a low pass to your subwoofer to blend it just right. And I did notice that there wasn't a whole lot of adjustment that I had to do once I plugged the subwoofer into this thing. So 450 seems like a lot for power speakers. You could say I can get some, what are those? Edifiers or swans for less money. Now I don't have a ton of experience with power speakers. I've never, well, I did own one pair of edifiers that I had at work, which were okay. This puts out way more bass than those do and it should at $450. But I think when you're looking at this product, you're looking at overall sound quality. You're also looking at where are you buying this product from? It's coming from the US. You have a 30 day in-home trial period. They pay for shipping and I believe it's a three year warranty. If you're on the fence, get them, audition them. If you don't like them, send them back. And since they are small, it's not like shipping is gonna be a huge amount. I think they may even pay for shipping back. If they don't, I'm sorry. So for a $279 subwoofer from something like Emotiva, if you are looking for a very simple, straightforward system, I don't think you can go wrong with the T0 Plus. I am really impressed. This is one of those speakers that you could trick your friends. If you had some bigger speakers next to it and you had a subwoofer connected to these and you could say, hey, which speaker am I using? Uh, really good. Uh, MDF, very nice finish, although it does pick up the fingerprints, but after you put them up there once, just get something and kind of rub off the fingerprints. Really impressed with it. I wouldn't worry that it's not full resolution. I wouldn't worry that you're not gonna get bit perfect playback. Most of the Sonics don't come from resolution. They come from the amplifier, the speaker, the analog output stage of the DAC. So I was very pleased and I could live with these. This is a great setup for something like a kid's room, maybe a yurt or your cabin. Desktop scenario, even in a desktop scenario though, I would still get a subwoofer. Very impressed, easy recommendation. If you have the budget for it, I think these are great. If you don't have the budget for it, there's plenty of other stuff out there. You're gonna have to piece it together with an amplifier and speakers and a subwoofer. But if you want something quick, easy, and sounds way better than it should for its size, then you should consider the Vanitu. Transparent Zero Plus. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links. However, this is not an affiliate link. Vanitu did not pay me for this review. They simply sent these to me and said, would you please listen to them and make a video about them if you like them? I love them. You can also buy me a cup of coffee, put some money in the tip jar. It's called the thanks button down at the bottom of the video but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you've got these underneath your TV. Binge, listen, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm a cheap audio man.